All right, all right. Oh, Christ. How you doing? I really believe that Richard Linklater's 1993 film Dazed and Confused is one of the most impressive high school films and how it captures the 1970s high school experience. Obviously, this movie has become a cult classic, but I think it achieves this uniqueness because it has an honesty and a realism that gives it not only credibility with the 70s generation, but with high schoolers of the 80s and even the early 90s who had some similar experiences. In this video, we're going to look back on this film for its 30th anniversary and just marvel at how good this movie really is. Richard Linklater, operating off of his own experiences in 1970s Texas, manages to get inside the world of May 1976 in a way that feels completely authentic. It captures the essence of teenage life in the 1970s from attitudes, clothes, music, and the feeling of boredom. But not only that, he depicts how cliques and dating and peer pressure all collided in really a genuine way. This movie takes place over the course of a 24-hour period, the last day of school as it moves into the beginning of the first day of summer. It's simple in that sense, but it also captures the varied experiences and feelings of teenagers as they transition either into their senior year or their freshman year of high school. And the cast in Dazed and Confused is stellar. Oh, it's almost shockingly so. You have actors that you would recognize, for, like Jason London, who plays Randall Pink Floyd, and Joey Lauren Adams, who plays Simone. Uh, but you also have much more recognizable, like, stars, big movie stars. Of course, you have Mila Jovovich, but you have, of course, Matthew McConaughey, Ben Affleck. You even have kind of the indie film darling Parker Posey. It's just an incredibly talented cast. And even when you see the movie today, you recognize a young Cole Hauser, who is, of course, very popular because of, of his work in Yellowstone. This cast is amazing. And even in one moment, you see Renee Zellweger in the background. Uh, which is just like, oh, oh my goodness, it's it's really a who's who of the talented young actors and actresses of the 1990s. Matthew McConaughey was only going to have a few scenes in the film, but there was some fighting going on between Sean Andrews, who played Pickford, and uh, Jason London, who played Randall Pink Floyd. Uh, and it because of this conflict, it made way for Andrews' character to be reduced and McConaughey to step into that void. And really, this is a big break for McConaughey, and he steals pretty much every scene he's in but still everyone shines everyone is memorable and that's perhaps Linklater's greatest gift is just his ability to orchestrate the film in a way where it feels like all these actors and actresses are inhabiting real teenagers from the 1970s all these characters have their own quirks and issues and personalities and there's something so real in how on a Friday night you might find yourself in one car and then through a series of events you end up in a totally different group in a different car before the night's even over. This experience was not exclusive to the 1970s. I graduated in the early 1990s and my experiences in high school in Alabama were pretty similar to what I saw in Dazed and Confused. That's what's striking about this movie. The experiences for high school kids in certain areas of the country are very similar for a long stretch of time, like 15 years more. In other words, I... I could relate to this film. There's a moment when several of the characters are snapping bottle caps uh, after they've been drinking a beer. And one of, one of the characters comments, I'm so bored. There was an age without cell phones, just the radio and pay phones and promises that we would meet up somewhere. And Dazed and Confused captures that reality so well. On a Friday night, not much would happen. But if it did... It was not that earth shattering. You know, one example of probably the most crazy thing that happens in the movie is when Mike, played by Adam Goldberg, deals with a bully who humiliate him earlier at a party. And he tries to get this liquid courage to overcome his embarrassment. And then he attacks the bully, who's played by Nikki Cat, only to get his ass kicked and humiliated more. It's a sad moment, but it was the most dramatic in some ways. Well, Ben Affleck did get paint poured on him, and he also got a shotgun pulled on him. So I guess there were those moments too. The soundtrack is authentic in a sense in that it, it's what kids in Texas were listening to in 1976. And the songs are placed in such a way that it enhances the film. It's very Scorsese-like. It's almost like Linklater just knows what's the best songs for what moments. Just the opening alone to Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith is amazing. The film's dialogue is also noteworthy as it captures 
captures the slang of the time and place, but it also rings true. It's believable. It's like, this is what these kids would have said. There's a moment when, when in the film when Slater says, check you later, and his friend Don just goes off on him. And there's so many of us, I think, that lived a certain time in a certain place in the United States that can just relate to that interaction. But you get to a point when you think about Dazed and Confused and you ask, like, what is this about? And I think in some ways, Dazed and Confused is about being just a time capsule from 1976. It lets us peek back and see a time from the past. But it also seems to be about pink, like Randall Floyd, wanting to break free and not conform to what others want for him. It is what the age is about in some ways. And the film never bangs us over the head with it. But if you look, it's there. It's this longing for something more. Also, this is a time of change. The 80s are coming uh, with all its good and bad. The film is funny in genuine ways. I love the moment where when when Slater is like pontificating on George and Martha Washington and especially how Martha Washington might be the best first lady in history. But also when Simone and Darla fall down at the party or Benny realizing he can't stand or when Word Wooderson asks Cynthia if she needs a ride when she's already driving a car. There are just so many real moments of humor and fun, things that you would believe high schoolers doing or saying, although uh, Wooderson wasn't in high school. But there is something I'm missing. Days and Confused is not glamorous like some high school films are. There is a, well, this is boring vibe to the film. It, it almost has a realization that the life they are living is not that great. It is in some ways just empty, but I think that's the brilliance of it. I, I'm not, it's not trying to sell you anything. It just is. And somehow many of us relate to it because it feels honest. And as we relate to it, we just fall in love with this movie, but make mo no mistake. This movie's timeless. It's about American teenagers. It captures the friendships, the shallowness, the longing for something more and in a way, the innocence of a time in life that not all, but there are many young people that had experienced those types of things. And, and I'm not saying like dazed and confused is the experience of every young person in the United States of America. If you're from a certain area and you're from a certain time period, there are some chances that you had similar experiences. Linklater made a classic and it might just be the best high school movie ever made. What do you think? Did dazed and confused relate to your experience? As always, thanks for watching and thank you for living in the past with me.